The final piece of the puzzle in getting a handsome looking picture out of that studio is of course rendering. And that is the process of somehow turning a 3D world into a 2D picture and making it look handsome in a time that we find suitable. This magic happens with something called ray tracing. And before we have a look at that studio and how to do the settings, I thought it might be interesting to think about how does a picture actually end up on what we know the, as the canvas. And that happens by something called ray tracing. And that is a technique that goes back, believe it or not, 500 years to a man in Germany who has used the same principle, not so much with computer graphics, but in his own work, that is Albrecht Dürer. And he was a very creative guy. He was a painter. He wrote books and he had lots of theories on things. And one of the things that he devised was perspective drawing. So back in those days, they didn't really have the rules and the technology that we have today. So he came up with his own thing, which is this here. This is a picture from Wikipedia. This is Albrecht here. This is his assistant here. And this contraption in the middle is something that he calls Duras Door. And this is when that was made, 1525. Crazy. So what he's doing here is he's drawing a perspectively accurate picture of a lute that's on the table here. His assistant has something like a pen implement here, to the end of which is attached a long string that goes through this window here. The window has the same dimensions as the piece of paper that he's holding here. And Albrecht is tracing every point that the assistant moves this little pen around the outsides of the lute and makes, at that point, makes a dot wherever this thread is through the window and makes a dot on that piece of paper. Kind of fascinating, isn't it? The string is attached to a hook at the end of which is a weight so that the string is always straight. And that, if done for the whole outside of the lute, will give us a perspectively correct, accurate representation of the object on the table. Kind of fascinating, isn't it? Works for portraits as well. It's fairly portable. And this is technically what ray tracing does in 3D. This hook here represents a single point camera that is essentially the point at which we put the camera and the camera then will frame up this picture here. So this is essentially what we frame up in 3D. And this here represents a single ray that is being bounced from the camera into the world and then it bounces off and thereby can give us the color of that pixel through which it bounces. Kind of crazy, isn't it? So yes, that's something interesting to remember. We're not actually bouncing light from the light source. This is another way, another representation of what we now know as ray tracing. We don't actually use the light source to cast light out and then it bounces off objects like it happens in the real world. We don't do this because that would take up a lot of processing power that we would never get to see the result of. So Imagine a light ray would bounce from here, would bounce onto the back side of the object, and then it basically goes straight here. It would still have to be calculated, but we'd never get to see it because it never ends up on our canvas. So they, they did a lot of tests and they realized if we just reverse that bouncing and not make it light-based ray tracing, they're making this eye-based ray tracing or camera-based ray tracing. So we're emitting a ray for every pixel through the canvas from the camera through here and we cast it until we hit an object and at that point we can say well that object is yellow it's not quite as simple as that because this ray could now bounce off here and bounce off to another surface that would also then color that light and then it would bounce off somewhere else and then it would maybe bounce off into the light source and so the modern ray tracing engines they actually do two passes so they calculate this ray first and then they calculate the same ray that hits the light source, they calculate that in reverse, and then they make an educated decision as to what each pixel needs to look like. So this is it hitting the shadow, that would be this pixel here. This is it hitting the surface, and this is it hitting the surface. Eventually we get the outside of the object, just like Albrecht and his little assistant in his studio. It's kind of fascinating, isn't it? Here's another one, an orthographic, whoops, here's another orthographic representation of the same process. What happens if we were to hit surfaces on the way. So we start here, go through the canvas. This is the pixel we're calculating. This bounces off here, this bounces off here, then that bounces maybe somewhere else and then eventually hits the light. And that is the whole path. So eye-based ray tracing. 
the amount of bounces we can actually set in IRA. We can tell IRA to only do one bounce or do as many bounces as necessary until the ray loses luminosity. Or we can say, do it only four times and then stop and don't do anything else. Kind of fascinating, isn't it? Let's have a look at that studio. And here's my assistant, the pirate alien. And he's going to help us having a look at the render settings. He's going to be the demo model. How you doing, buddy? So render settings, as you might have guessed, are on the render settings tab. And they are by default set up to be exactly like I have them here. So this is everything that's gray is the default values and they work fairly well. All we really need to do is under the general tab, specify the size of our image. I've picked something fairly low here, 800 by 800, so that the picture kind of calculates with the defaults in you know, a good amount of time. And then that's really it. Um, everything else is set to the defaults. I'm going to go and hit that big blue render button here at the top. You can also hit Command R. That'll do the same thing. Namely, it'll open up two little windows here. One is the render canvas here on the right. And on the left, we have a little, well, kind of a status window that will give us little messages. This first process, the, the moment where that studio appears to hang, that is it loading all the assets into the GPU so that the GPU can then go and process it. If you don't have a GPU, then it'll happen on the CPU, but the data still needs to be transferred so that the IRA engine can handle that. And then you'll go and see this orange bar that goes from the left to right, and it'll give you a time of how long this takes, so 37, 38 seconds, and also the amount of ray bounces that is necessary for this to calculate. So we can see just over 2,000. We've got 47 seconds done. I think the picture looks pretty good already, but IRA doesn't quite think it's finished, so it still hasn't quite reached its convergence percentage here, which is close to 95% at just around, there we go, just under 3,000 iterations. It now reckons this picture is now good and ready. Okay, we can work with that. We can see why it took so long. We can maybe make that longer. We can make that faster, but we'll tackle that in a moment. Right now, we think, hey, that's awesome. That's a picture. I want to share this on social media. I want to put it into Photoshop. I want to do it. I want to put it onto my portfolio, whatever. We can go and save it now. At the bottom here, we have this little drop down menu that lets us do one of two things. Either I can pick a folder, that's this icon here. That means I can now go and browse to a folder with this menu. I've just browsed to my desktop here. That's the destination it has. Oh, has it taken that? Hasn't had it desktop. There we go. <laughs> I'll just put it in my desktop. Or even better, I could put it into my new project folder. That's another idea that I could do. And then at the top here, I can give it a name. Maybe I'll call it alien. Well, maybe I'll spell it correctly, alien. And then here I can give it a Whoop, move that over here a little bit so you can actually see it. Over here, I can go and give it a file format that I'd like to save out. JPEG is something that uses lossy image compression. You know JPEG, I suppose, but we don't in Das Studio when we save it as a JPEG, we can't save how much compression is applied. So there may there may be artifacts when you do that. PNG is my personal choice. PNG saves with a lossless compression, and it also saves most importantly with transparency. So I don't have any in my image right now because I have a background that I've rendered. But if I wanted to render my alien in trans with transparency then I would have to use PNG or TIFF for that. TIFF is a little bit larger and it's not really good for uploading to the web. PNG is kind of the preferred choice. And then you have the good old fashioned bitmap on Windows at least. And that's really all we need to do. So now I can go and hit save and that saves my picture. That's my render. If I go to my desktop now, there's my alien. I can double click him and then he opens up in photos and that's, you know, that's that's what he is. There's no grain visible. He's a little pixelated because this was only an 800 by 800 picture, but you know, looking handsome, buddy. Thank you so much for standing in there. I like it. There's also a way to save your render into something called the render library. I've got this tab at the top here, and that's just a way to display your renders inside Das Studio. I'll show you in a second how to get there. I don't use it much, just, you know, if you wanted to keep your renders all in the same place that you can go and open directly from within Das Studio with your favorite photo application, then there is a way. I'll show you that in a second as we render the little guy again. So one thing I would recommend is when you do that, when you hit the render button or when you hit Control R, make sure that 
your viewport preview is not in iRay. So I can, of course, switch this over into iRay, and then it'll take a little bit, you know, take a little bit of time for the IRA engine to kick in and give me that preview render. If you now render the scene, it will do it, but the thing is, it'll take a little bit longer to calculate that because while IRA is now doing the main production render, it'll still go and render the preview render in your viewport in the background. And that is something that sometimes takes, that not every computer can deal with that. There used to be a time back in the day where doing it this way is actually producing a faster render than not doing it this way. But nowadays the GPU literally has to work twice as hard to get to the same result. So I recommend not doing that. I'll just let iRay finish here and show you how to save this same alien here into the render library. This here, by the way, is a separate window that is not dockable. And if you have it open once the render is finished, you literally have two windows open. So one is Das Studio. And if your render happens to go away, hit Alt Tab and then, you know, find that window here. The same happens with that little status window. While IRA is rendering, you have this, you have the status window with the DAS window. So, you know, hit Alt Tab to find what you would like to be displayed during the render. So I'm going to go and just switch this IRA preview off again. Give my computer a bit of an easier time here. Alt tab, and then I'll bring my render into the foreground. I'll show you how to save something to the render library. That is literally this other option here that is not the folder. This is the render library here, this thing. If I select that, then I can pick a render library here. I only have one that I can select, but you can, under Manage Directories, you can define others, which are just empty folders. Save them together with your projects, or you can put them into your pictures directory or in Dropbox or anywhere else. It's just an empty folder. And you can have, as I said, you can have multiple. I'm just going to use this one here. The render library is called hit accept. Then I can give it a title. I'll just call it alien preview, maybe, and then hit save. And when I do that, this window auto closes. And this window here in my render library now has my alien preview, which happens to be very similar to this one. But hey, one of those things. You can right click any of these images and then browse to their location. So if you're not sure where that render library is actually hiding, you can just go and browse there and then find a window or a Windows Explorer window will open up and then that'll show you all these pictures that you've made there. You can also go and delete them from here. So right click and then hit delete and that'll just remove this picture from the render library. Are you sure? Yes, we are. Ding, that's the render library. Now, but how does iRay concur that after about 3000 iterations, it is done with my alien here? How does that work? And why did it take a minute? And can I maybe get a render out of it that takes longer and have better quality? Or can I have one that is a bit shorter uh, that has maybe less quality, but lets me have a bit of an earlier preview, like if I wanted to render animations and whatnot? How do I do that? Well, there is a thing under the progressive rendering tab in the render settings that lets me adjust all these things. So by default, this option is enabled, which is the rendering quality. And that is the magic that lets iRay deduce when a picture is fully cooked and ready to eat, so to say, or ready to serve, shall we say, al dente, whatever analogy you prefer. So when this is enabled, it will look at this parameter here, which is the render quality. And it'll also look at this parameter here, which is the rendering converged ratio. If I understand this correctly, this is the amount of pixels that have been rendered in your image. So 95 is kind of almost there, but you can set this higher. You can set this to 100 and then it'll do a little bit more. But know that the last 5%, it'll take almost twice as long as it did to, to render the whole image to reach that. Alt left click will bring that back to the defaults. And the same is true for the rendering quality. If you'd like to have something better, you can just set this value to something higher, like five, and then let it render. And once again, know that iRay will take a lot longer to figure out, is this add rendering quality five or not? Likewise, you can set this to something below one and set this to something like 0.5 and then render and then it'll be quicker, but there might be grain in your picture as a result. So if we set this just as a, just as a laugh here, if I set this to 0.2 and then I hit render, let's see what happens then. How many bounces it takes iRay to do this and how long it takes iRay to do this. So the previous picture was 3000 iterations and it took just over a minute, I believe. This first part is always going to be the longest, especially if you have a lot of assets in your scene because they all need to be sent to the GPU. And that'll just take some time. Look at that, it's almost done. 
it's still doing 95%, but it does so at a lower render quality. I might just go and save this in my render library as alien preview, and then just head over here and double click him so I can go and zoom in and see if we can find anything that is that is significantly worse. I can't really see it, but Irie must have had reason to say I'm done after so many iterations. Well, let's try something else. Let's keep the rendering quality at 0.2 and set the rendering converged ratio to 50%. And then we say Control R and we'll see what Irie does then. The previous one was just under 30 seconds. Let's see what happens now. Oh, that was so fast. I couldn't even count. That is amazing. Look at that. So now we have something that is certainly grainy and rough around the edges. I can see some grain in his eyes here. I'll just call this Alien Preview 2 and save this to my render library as well. Double click this so I can easily open it. Zoom in. And yes, I can see that this is now much grainier, but it only took me a few seconds to get to the picture. So that's kind of handy if you wanted to make animations and you're not too worried about the grain here. There's also a way to get rid of that, as we see in a moment. So that's how you can reduce your render time. But I got to be perfectly honest with you, I find these values very vague. And it's only because I also work with other render engines. And therefore, I think more in terms of how many ray bounces does it take to create a picture. So whenever iRay does this, it'll give you the amount of iterations, which is iRay's version of ray bounces. That's this value here, samples. That's, that's also what it calls it, samples or iterations. And iteration is the ray bounce process and the samples is the amount of ray bounces it actually undertakes. This is something else that's important to understand about the rendering quality here. If you use this value, then it will look at both the quality and the conversion ratio, but it will also look at these two top values as you do that, the max samples and the max time it takes to create this render. So the max time is an interesting one. If you were to set the rendering quality to something like, I don't know, 10, and you set the converged ratio to something like 100%, and you'd now hit render, it is likely that IRA will take longer than this max time value to make that happen. But this value will override these values. So after a maximum of 7,200 seconds, which is two hours in old money, it will stop rendering no matter what. So if you are keen on having a render render for like five hours, you got to make sure you set this max time value accurately. If you wanted to render something overnight, if it's a really complex scene, and this is on a per picture basis. So we're not talking animations. Animations obviously take much longer, but this value is meant for a single picture. So if the amount of rendering time would exceed this value, IRA will say, I'm going to stop here after 7,200 seconds. So if you wanted to make that 20 hours, just hit add zero at the end, and that's now 20 hours. Let's just hope your single frame render isn't going to take 20 hours, huh? Likewise, the max samples. So in order to achieve this, it will either take this value, which is, let's say, two hours, or it will take this value, which is 5,000 iterations. If it would take more iterations to create this render quality, it would stop after 5,000 iterations. Or this max time value, which is max, which is 7,200 seconds. So those are important considerations to make. So it's a little bit of a puzzle to maybe get to where you want, but my recommendations is play with it and see what happens. I tend to leave these at the default and literally disable rendering quality altogether, in which case these values go away, and just set a value for the max samples here. So I'd be somebody who says, hey, I want to see what my picture looks like after 100 iterations. So I'll type in the number 100, and then I'll say render, and then it will go and do its thing, and it'll stop after 100 iterations. And at that point, I, the user, can have a look at what does the picture look like, and does it need any additional iterations. So sometimes for animations, 100 iterations is perfectly adequate. In my case, I can see it really isn't. It, it, needs, it needs more. And I can see grain here. Let me go and actually make that a bit bigger. I'll go over to general. Maybe say 1600 by 1600. And then I'll hit command R again. And we'll have a look together. Uh, just because then we can see it zoomed in a little bit better. Because then I'll show you another little trick that you can use once your render is finished and it doesn't look as good as you wanted it to look. It's kind of a hidden menu in Das Studio that he, who knew we had it. And let's have a look at his eyes here. Here I'm going to have a look at 100 iterations. This is it and I can definitely see grain in his eyes here.
So if I deduce this down, I'm thinking, hey, 100 iterations was obviously not enough. Maybe I need 500. Maybe I need 1,000. I don't know yet. There's this little hidden menu here on the side of your render window. So this is the window I'm talking about, the render window. If you hover over on the left-hand side and you click it, then this magic menu opens up. And that has quite a few surprises for us in stock, namely that we have progressive rendering much like the same option that we've had over here in the render settings tab. And now we can go and make adjustments to some of these values. So if I'm now thinking, hey, maybe I should have used 200 instead of 100, I can just go type this in. And then at the bottom of this window, don't close it down, bottom right, we can see that this button has now turned into resume. And that's kind of nice because if we go and click that, IRA will start at iteration 101 and just keep adding iterations to my render without me having wasted the first 100. So a classic example is that you may have rendered for half an hour already and you look at your picture and you think, hmm, I'm still not happy. I wish I had invested another half hour. If you haven't thrown the half hour render time away, you can just add another half hour or another so many iterations to it. So very cool tip. Good thing to play around with this. So you have other things here that you can change while the render is ongoing. So this menu also comes up while the render is ongoing. If you wanted to play with the tone mapper options or with the white mode or with other filtering options, you can do that and literally during the render enable those. Note that some of these values when you set them will restart the render from the beginning. So one of those things to experiment with. I'm going to go and close my window now and I'm going to keep it on 1600 by 1600 because I wanted to show you something else that can combat grain really well and make your renders much better as they render. So this is something that there's a little bit of confusion about and I'm going to go and set my max samples. I'm going to leave those on 200 and we saw that with 200 we still had grain there. So under filtering here we have something called there's other filters here. I'm not going to go into details of all of them, but there's this one here, the post denoiser. And that is something, noise is always a problem in these types of rendering engines. So it doesn't matter if it's cycles or if it's octane, noise is always a thing. And IRA is, of course, no exception. So if we go and enable this, the post denoiser, it can go and cleverly kind of reduce the noise by applying some very fancy AI algorithms there. Enabling this isn't actually enough. You have to enable this so that post denoiser available is on. And then you also have to select this option here, which is the post denoiser enable. And then it has this little option at the bottom here that says at which iteration it should kick in. So eight is the default, and I kind of like that, but some people find it rather disturbing because after eight iterations, there's still a hell of a lot of noise in the picture. So when the denoiser kicks in, it will reduce all the noise, but the picture will look really freaky and crazy, which is why often people think, hey, the denoiser is bad and I don't want to use it. Not the case. You just need to give the render engine more time to add more iterations, and then the better the denoiser will be able to denoise your picture. So with 200 iterations, if I go and render my image again, let's see what happens. Let's see what it looks like. We'll see after eight iterations, there's a little pause usually, and then the denoiser kicks in and uh, then there's no noise. But after that, the image will, of course, keep rendering and change. So this is noise and we go and and eventually, boom, there we go. No more noise. So it needs a little bit of time to calculate this. So I can see that the reflection in his eyes is still a little smeary, but there's no noise. So the background looks good. The gold looks good. I could say on a case by case basis, this might actually be good enough for what I need. And if I need a little bit more, well, then we have that little secret menu here that I can just go and open up and say, perhaps I'm going to go and try maybe 500 iterations. And I just go and close this window, hit the resume button, and then see what happens with his eyes. As the denoiser still remembers the values, they'll just get refined. And so with more iterations on there, my picture will turn better and better. But I guess my point is that I'm in charge of how long it takes, and I'm also in charge of saying, when have I had enough? So eye reflections is one thing. Uh, leather here at the very top, I can, I can definitely see an improvement here with a few more iterations. When you start rendering human characters, you will see that more and more skin detail is coming out and reflections, especially when you render it more and more, then all these things will get better with longer rendering time.
There's obviously a lot of other stuff on this render settings tab, including some presets and an advanced tab up here. But those are just to recap the basics. Under general, set your render dimensions here. Then pick still image or animation. If you wanted to render an animation, image series would render you a series of images, whereas movie would try to make a compressed movie. We're not talking about animations here, but if you're ever in that situation, choose the image series. For still images, we're using this version here. Then under Render Mode, you hit Photo Real. There's two options here, Interactive and Photo Real. This is kind of the second mode that iRay has. It's a biased mode that takes some shortcuts. It's not much faster. It just leaves out some features of the engine. So I usually just leave this on Photo Real. Then on Progressive Rendering, you can either choose to render with the default rendering quality. And when that is enabled, make a mental note of the max samples as well as the max time and make sure they do not cut off your render too early. Then set your render quality and or your converge ratio or work like I do and just switch this off and type in a value of the max samples here and then render and see how good it is and then you know stop the render when you're ready. Just as a rule of thumb, if you render something like this at 2000 by 2000 or 3000 by 3000, I would probably go with a thousand iterations or more. Between 1000 and 5000 iterations is usually something that I find has fantastic quality. But your mileage may vary. You can have as much or as little iterations as you need for your project. And then the final thing that I literally use in every render is under filtering, and that's the post denoiser. This, these are the two options here. It needs to be made available, and then it needs to be enabled for it to kick in after so many iterations. If you're freaked out by smeary images and they can look quite ghostly, set this to a higher value, something like, you know, a thousand, and then let the denoiser kick in at that point. I'm not bothered. I know what it does. I can just keep an eye on it. That's really how I work. There's one last thing I wanted to bring to your attention that's on the advanced tab. There's a couple of options that you might want to look into. So I have a system that has two graphics cards and we have two boxes here on the hardware tab. This is in charge of my photo reel mode. This is the one I'm using and this is in charge of the interactive mode, which I'm not using. But you can set which GPU is in charge for rendering here. So you can be very granular about this. I tend not to use my CPU on this particular system. If you had a system that only has a CPU and you don't see any GPUs here, you'll see something like this, in which case you don't have an option but to render with the CPU. Just know that you are in charge of what is being used here. So I know people who have a strong GPU and a weak GPU and the weak GPU they tend to use for their monitors and the strong GPU they want to leave free just for iRay. And that's a great way of saying, hey, this one, say this is a strong GPU, you use this for rendering and this one, anything that's disabled will not be included in the rendering process. I strongly recommend that you run tests with something like a demo image and about a thousand iterations and literally make a list of what, how long does it take with everything enabled, how long does it take with something disabled and something else disabled. You might be surprised. So in my case, I don't tend to use the CPU because it getting involved is actually only making my render maybe 5% faster at the expense of a lot of heat. And on this particular system, the CPU really gets in the way of rendering together with the GPUs. But I have other systems where it makes a significant difference to set the CPU and the GPU both to render mode, as opposed to just letting one GPU render, especially on older systems, where the CPU is sometimes faster than the GPU. So do a few tests in there. Canvases and bridge, we're not really talking about here. This is for multi-pass rendering. I might tackle that in another tutorial. In fact, there is one on my YouTube channel if you're interested in that. Some fancy stuff that you can do with multi-pass rendering. And then bridge is something that is interesting for those of you who don't have a strong GPU who might want to look into cloud rendering with services like Infinite Compute, or Boost for DAS, or many of the other services that are out there, or those of you who have a license for IRA server. So that allows you to connect a different computer to this computer and send the render over to another machine to have it being executed in the background.
Under hardware, just to come back to hardware here, there's something else at the bottom of this dialog, and that's in this box here. And that is something to be aware of. There is this here This says allow CPU fallback requires restart. So mine is enabled, but usually I tend not to use that. So what this option does is if for whatever reason your scene cannot be rendered in your GPU, iRay will be clever enough to say, hey, this doesn't fit for whatever reason. I can't make it work but I don't want to give you an error message and not give you a picture. So instead, I'm going to divert this render to the CPU. And it's a nice idea, but it'll also take like, you know, 10 times longer than you had perhaps expected. And so it's it's nice that it's here because it gives you a picture no matter what. But if you're confused why one render takes, you know, 10 times longer and the other one is, is done in literally a tenth of the time, then this might be the reason. If you disable that, then a restart of DAS Studio is required. But in that case, if something goes wrong with the GPU render, you'll just get a black picture and not even as much as an error message. You will just see, hey, that render just didn't work. And it, it happens rather fast. It'll still try to load everything into the GPU and then it'll just, you know, might not, might not work. The most common issue in that scenario is it didn't fit. So you had too much geometry or too many, too large textures that just didn't fit into your GPU's VRAM and iRay just couldn't make it work. Usually in those types of cases, if that didn't work, remember there's this lock that you can investigate. So help, troubleshooting, view lock file, and then scroll to the very end and it will then show you what happened here. So these are all the status messages that I get and they're all, everything worked well, but it's had something not work, then this would show me, usually give me an indication of what the reason for that is. One related feature down here, scheduling. This is how many threads of your CPU you might want to use for rendering. So if you had something that you want to use for background rendering, you might not want to use all available CPU threads. I have 48 available, but if I wanted to say half of my CPU power I'd like to use for something else while DAS Studio renders in the background while I do whatever, video editing, web surfing, then you can set that to a different amount and allocate a particular amount of threads to IRA if you wanted to render it with the CPU. I thought I'd mention that because it's one of those things that, you know, it, it, it comes up from time to time. And I think we've talked about everything. Most important thing here on the editor tab, under progressive rendering, your render samples and your rendering quality, should you use it under filtering, the denoiser, and under general, your file name. There's a secret menu that we discussed on the render window with which you can resume renders. And I believe that is all there's to it. Oh, yeah, that one one final thing. Once you're done with all these settings and you say, hey, this is my dream configuration, I want to go and save it, then you can do that from the content library like we discussed before. I can literally go and use the plus icon here and save myself some render settings here, render settings preset. That will literally save anything and everything that I've defined on that tab. I'll call it something really render settings and it'll give me a choice of what i'd like to include with this i could say i only want to save whatever i've set in my environment option so you know anything relating to hdri i don't want to override anything else with that or i can say i want to use my nvidia iray render settings and then you can be very granular of what you want to save that so it's very very handy to save aspects of your render settings so these are all part of the render settings preset it's a little bit like the scene subset. It's a subset of your settings. You can either choose to save everything or just partially save whatever you'd like to add to another project. There we go. I'm going to save everything just as a demo. Hit accept. And then that's that. That's my render setting saved. A little yellow render strap there. And that is all I can tell you at this point about render settings. In the next video, let's just put everything together and literally do this all because practice makes perfect from loading a figure to setting up some lights and the camera and the render settings and see if we can get a handsome picture out of it in all under 20 minutes. Hmm, what a challenge.